Hello YouTube, today I'm going to be reviewing the Holy Scube made by Tony Fisher, mass produced by Mefferts Challenge. This puzzle is a scube, but it's holy. And it's a square hole, as you could see. I have a pencil I could put in it, so as you could see, it's holy. on each side and the hole is actually quite big there it is and the reason why I bought this was because they were selling them in stores they were selling the gear cube extreme the um, pyraminx and the holy scube and there were a lot of there were quite a bit of money but at the time I didn't really know about internet um shops so i was like yeah i'm going to just buy this puzzle and yes it's here right now um we're going to take a look at the mechanism in a few minutes but the turning of this puzzle is it's it's quite good actually it's just extremely extremely clicky and springy if you could hear this is due to the um Ball, ball bearings inside the puzzle so to keep every single line so let's say that happens nothing happens but click and you could do your next move this puzzle's size is comparatively smaller to um, a Rubik's brand 3x3 three three, but just by a little as you could see, it's maybe one millimeter smaller, so it's an extremely nice size in the hands, just like um, a Rubik's three by three. Okay, so now we're going to take this puzzle apart to just look at the mechanism a little. This puzzle consists of six um, center caps, and these center caps I'm talking about are the square pieces of holes, and four corners that you could take out and four corners that are part of the core. So as you can see these are the center caps. Okay, so two of them. These are the core, um, corners you could take out with the ball bearing causing the clickiness. And this is the core. And it's a little hard to see but there's springs in it that permit corner cutting on the puzzle. So with the ball bearings and the um, Brings, it's extremely um corner it, it corner cuts pretty well actually um to put this puzzle back together after taking it out it's as easy oh i forgot to mention how to take it apart you just put your finger in the hole and pry a piece out and it just decomposes so to put it back together you put it in the center by sliding it in two corners another center and you just continue doing that until the um puzzle is completely um, assembled. So as you could see, this is extremely easy and even I could do it. And now we're coming to an end, the last um, center and it's done. And you can still turn it. So as you were able to see, putting this puzzle back together and taking it apart, is very very easy um just be careful that the ball bearings do not um pop out because they're quite hard to find once they're on the ground and get lost now the pros of this puzzle this puzzle turns extremely well in my case at least and the size is good also the plastic feels durable and the holes are big enough to make it look cool and they're not it's not it's not like oh it's a holy cube but it's extremely tiny holes and it's um uh, just it's it's just to gather intention like just to get an idea on how big these holes are this is um a dvd right here as you could see it's the same size as 
um, a DVD discs hole. On the other hand, this puzzle has two or three cons. The first con is the clicking mechanism. As it's very, very noisy, and because of this, I do not solve it very often. In the past um, two years I've had it, I've maybe only solved it like 20, 30 times. Yes, not a lot at all. The second con is how this puzzle pops so much. When, when um, since there's a clucking mechanism, you assume it wouldn't pop. But in order to turn these pieces, you have to put your finger in the hole and grip on. Or else you have almost no grip. You, you see, you still have to put a hole in. And there's cases that... As you can see right here, it's it's a solid ball. So when the um, you're making a turn like here, let's say, like here, the solid ball section is now pinching my finger and the um, uh, and the um uh, center piece here. So when you do it, your first instinct is to take your finger out, and when you do so, this just pops, and it's it's extremely annoying during solves. And my last complaint was that there was a sticker missing. This right top corner did not have a sticker when it came. My final thoughts on this puzzle. At first I did not know what a cube was and so when I bought it I assumed that these were able to be turned because there was lines on it like so. Like you could do on a Rubik's cube like that. But you can. It's a corner turning puzzle. So that got a lot getting used to. In conclusion, um, the mechanism ex is extremely um, genius. The springs in these fixed corners allow somewhat some uh, flexibility to the um, puzzle itself. So even if it's a little off a line, it could move. I would, if this was like a test or something, I would give this puzzle 80 on 100. It loses. Um, 15 points for the clicky, clickiness, 10 points for the clickiness, 5 points for the pop, and 5 points for missing a sticker. If you enjoyed this video, please comment, like, and subscribe to my channel. I would like to welcome the few subscribers I've got um, since the last video. I'm extremely grateful for them. And um, uh, please check out my channel. I come out with cubing videos, manga videos. And occasionally let's plays weekly. I've been busy a cup in the past few weeks, but I'm trying to I'm trying to maintain the schedule. So anyways, if you enjoyed, please like, comment, subscribe. Have a good day and as always goodbye.